<laughs> Help me understand again what's going on. This is your. You, I know that you're our economics and business editor, but you're also a bit of a specialist when it comes to the housing market, aren't you? It's been said. Yes, yes, it has been said. You're, 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 but you've written at least one book on this topic, yeah. haven't you? So what's gone wrong here? Why are we not going to get the houses that we so desperately need? It's a, it's a long-standing problem. There's a lack of planning permission. A lot of the planning permissions that aren't given, are given aren't actually used, so-called phantom homes, because big developers don't want to use them. They want to sit on them, prevent small businesses getting them. What we're talking about specifically is affordable homes, which are usually... 60 to 70 percent of the local market rent, which developers are obliged to build when they yeah. build other houses for commercial. That's a relatively new kind of law, yeah. isn't it? I and mean, then, the last 20 years. And then there's social housing, what we would call council housing in old money, and there's a massive shortage of that too. Now, we just heard from Meg Hillier. She's a Labour MP, but we shouldn't think of her as a Labour MP in this context because she is the chair of the Public Accounts Committee. That is the most important committee in the House of Commons. Right. It scrutinises government finances and the Treasury, and it's always chaired by a widely respected opposition MP. So when Labour are in, the Tories chair it and vice versa. That seems sensible. And I don't think she's making a party political point here yeah. because there's a lack of affordable housing and social housing right across the board. There are 1.2 million people on the waiting list for council houses. We saw last week just the tip of the iceberg when we hear of young children dying in council houses yeah unfortunately, because of mould and other infections, because those council houses are so often mm. badly maintained. And then there's a lot of people living in social housing that's provided by the private sector, but the state pays for it with housing benefit. Our housing benefit bill is up above £30 billion, absolutely huge amount of money, because there is a lack of social housing. It's an intractable problem. It's partly down to planning permission. It's partly because people don't want homes often built in their areas mm. and those so-called NIMBY, some people would call them, mm. a pejorative term, clearly they would disagree, but they tend to be very, very powerful, particularly in Conservative councils, but elsewhere too. You know, we had this news from Keir Starmer earlier in the week, didn't we? I think it was on Monday, talking about the fact that he would like to devolve a lot of powers into local areas and take them out of Westminster. Seeing this situation through that lens, would that be beneficial, do you think, with the housing market? Because in a way, the locals have too much power sometimes in those areas. That's why the building isn't happening. It's very, very difficult to make that happen. Look, just yesterday, I was on GB News talking about the fact that Michael Gove, a pretty determined minister, mm. he is communities housing and levelling up secretary again, he had to climb down. He had to tell 60 of his own MPs that were about to rebel on the government's levelling up bill that housing targets for local authorities would, quote, not be mandatory, but would be guidance only. And it was only on that basis that these 50 or 60 odd Tory MPs decided not to rebel. And he did that, even though his Labour opposite number, Lisa Nandy, said, we will vote for this levelling up bill so you can trounce your rebels. We can, we can help you beat your rebels, Michael Gove, and get these housing mandatory targets through. But the government, uh, Rishi Sunak and Michael Gove, didn't go for that because they know how unpopular it is, particularly in seats where it's sort of, you know, Tory versus Lib Dem seats, like we saw in Cheshire and Amersham yeah. on the outskirts of affluent northwest London. So this is a really, really difficult problem. Meanwhile... You know, youngsters can't buy a home. Meanwhile, fertility in this country is falling because women of child, you know, when they have their first child on average, it's 27, 28. Almost half the women of those age, that age are living in rented accommodation. Yeah. And it's very difficult in many people's minds to, to, to start a family if you're in rented accom plan. accommodation or living with your mates from university or your mates from work. And this is a major, major problem. I wouldn't be surprised if Keir Starmer tackled housing when it comes to mm. Prime Minister's questions later yeah. uh, this afternoon, at, at midday, of course, not least because, as I said, Labour did offer yeah. to put this Tory legislation through with Labour votes yeah. in order to embarrass the government. It's like an easy goal, doesn't it? It does feel like an easy goal. And, and of course, Keir Starmer is not going to want to talk about the strikes, is he? Because, yeah. of course, Labour yeah. are always ambivalent on the strikes yeah. because they get a lot of money if we're being open and honest, which we are on GB News, mm. from the trade union movement, just as the Tories get lots of money from those property developers who often don't want too many houses built because they like to keep their market power. And the one bit of good news on the housing market front this week is that Michael Gove, while announcing that climb down, he also announced 
uh, that he would like to see a Competition and Markets Authority inquiry into the house building sector uh, and the CMA have agreed that they're certainly minded to consider that in the new year in January because he feels, rightly in my view, I've written about it for many years, that the pro- big property companies, they're too powerful, they're too dominant, they're yeah. an oligopoly, if you like, uh, they dominate the market and there's not enough competition and that's a big reason, in my view, why house prices stay high and why so many people get a raw deal. Yeah, thank you, Liam.